Hey friends, this is an abbreviated video um, based on one that I made last spring. So you will see me in a different outfit and having some different commentary because it was for a different class. But for us, um, we're gonna just do a brief overview of the couple of types of lamps that we use the most, right? So we're not hitting LEDs, but we will talk about incandescent and halogen lamps because those are most commonly used in our industry as well as the way that a fluorescent light works. Here's me from last spring. So when we talk about lamps, every theatrical lamp is identified by an ANSI code number, okay? Like HPL or FLK. That number doesn't have any um, particular abbreviation for anything. It's just a code, like a three letter code that is um, representing all of this data about the lamp, okay? So it's the shape, the base type, the filament type, power consumption, lifespan, efficiency, all of that kind of stuff is embedded in that code information. Here are a few kinds of lamps. Um, so tubular is this long and tall lamp. Um, then you have arbitrary, which is the kind that's in your lamp at home. So that's the only one I can demonstrate for you right now because I'm in a house, not a theater. Um, PS is pear shaped. B is a decorative lamp, like a candelabra fixture. So any, any sort of um, light bulb that is shaped like a flickering flame. Okay. G is globe. So a globe shaped lamp. R is a lamp with a reflector in it, um, and a PAR has the reflector and the lens, and that's the kind of lamp that you would find in a PAR can. So parabolic aluminized reflector is a PAR. Here's a whole bunch of other lamp sizes and shapes. Um, so this is kind of the broad spectrum of potential shapes. Here are base types. So we talked about this a little bit when we were taking the lights apart and putting them back together, which thank goodness we did before they shut down school. Um, screw bases are the ones that you find in your house. The sizes that we usually deal with, okay, so the ones that you should have some awareness of, are the medium E26, E27 screw bases. Those are the ones that you'll find in your house. Mogul are kind of bigger, more giant bases. Um, and then candelabra and mini candelabra, so E11, E12, those are gonna be on some house fixtures, like uh, a lamp from Ikea might have a candelabra base lamp. Um, they'll also be in chandeliers. So those are the three main sizes. Those little candelabra bases can also be found on some theatrical lighting fixture lamps. So. Here's a bayonet, which have um, little little knobby things, little nubbins on the bottom of them. Um, bi pin bases. So a bi pin base is like the lamps that the Source Four Minis had. Um, fluorescent tubes also have bi pin bases. Um, so that's any any lamp base that has two pins sticking out. Um, another lamp we talk about a lot that has a bi pin base is our HPL, which is our standard Source 4 lamp. So the ones for the Source 4s where you just pulled them in and pushed them out. Those are also bi-pin base lamps. We also have medium pre-focus, okay? And this is the kind that we had in the Fresnel until Dylan broke it, okay? So that pre-focus base has those two flanges. One is larger than the other, and that's the way you should put it into the socket, like in the Fresnel. Um, that's the one I took apart completely during class. So that's your medium pre-focus base. These are three lamps that we might find in the wild in our theater. So a BTL is 500 watts, an HPL, that's what we use for a source four. That one is going to be 575 um, in the middle or 375 if you want it to be less bright or 750 if you want it to be more bright. And those 750 watt lamps have that third pin to make sure you don't put it in upside down. Um, and then EVR is an example of a theatrical lamp that does have a screw base, okay? So these three lamps have the three kinds of bases that we talked about, right? So there's a bi-pin base for the HPL, there's a screw base on the EVR, and the BTL is a medium prefocus base.
for Fresnel. Here are four types of lamps that I want you to have awareness of, okay? So your carbon arc lamp is one of the first types of electric light. It consists of two carbon arc rods that are touched together. They create that electrical arc, so it's like controlled lightning. And we use them in theater for follow spots. They used to be used for a lot more, but right now we use them um, for follow spots in theaters. Incandescents. Okay, so incandescent lights are our standard, regular, in-your-house light bulb, okay? So incandescent just means that you heat up a wire so much that it glows and gives off light, okay? So an incandescent light source is any light source that is created by pushing electricity through a thin wire, causing it to heat up enough that it glows. So what we use is a fine tungsten wire. So tungsten is a type of, it's like carbon, it's a, it's a metal. Um, and we put it inside of the globe of the lamp and then we fill that with either a vacuum, so either no air at all, or we put an inert gas inside of that. And when we do that, that prevents the, the filament from burning up, okay? Because if that filament is exposed to air, it will burn, okay? Um, the electricity will go through that tiny wire, that filament, it will create heat and light, um, and because of that amount of heat um, that is required when it creates light, it would burn up if it were outside of the bulb. So halogen lamps. These are our primary type of lamp we use in the theater, okay? So you can see that's a 750 watt halogen HPL fixture lamp right there for a source four. It is um, a tungsten filament, so it's the same filament as a regular incandescent lamp. It is a type of incandescent lamp because it is an incandescent lamp with a halogen gas inside of the globe of the light bulb, right? And it also uses a quartz glass. So instead of regular glass, it uses quartz glass. This is the kind that you don't want to touch or it'll make the light bulb explode as we discussed in class, okay? Um, and what happens when you touch it is called devitrification. Okay, so that's what happens when the oil from your skin reacts with the quartz as the halogen lamp heats up, okay? It's not going to happen if you touch it and it sits on the table, but if you put it into service and you put electricity through it and it heats up, then you are going to get that bubbling and discoloration, possibly an explosion. Not a good time. I mean, depends on who you are, but not a good time. A small arc is created through a mercury gas, okay? So it's like a little tiny lightning rod, not like the big lightning that's out in the air that we have with the carbon arc, but just a little tiny trickle of electricity flows through the gas. That arc in the gas will give off UV light. So if we think about UV light, we're talking about the part of the light spectrum that gives you a sunburn. It's not part of the visible light spectrum though, okay? So when you take that UV light um, and they hit a phosphorus coating, which is the white part on the inside of a fluorescent tube, then that turns that into visible light, okay? This is the same idea as black light. So if it got very, it lost me, it lost me. It was too excited. Um, so same idea as black light, UV light is black light basically. So it doesn't make anything glow unless it has that phosphorus in it. That's why if you're like at a rave, I mean, you're not at a rave, if you're at like laser tag um, and you have black light everywhere and your white t-shirt and your teeth and those other white objects glow, it's because they have that phosphorus content that's reacting with the UV light from the black lights, okay? Hey friends, uh, future me again. So uh, those are your four types of lights, of lamps that you should have some awareness of. I will also link, um, I'll put a folder in with a set of links to um, a series of uh, YouTube videos that are hosted by this hilarious guy, Rick, who is a light bulb collector. So if you have any interest in light bulbs, old light bulbs, whatever, he's quite entertaining. 
Um, so I will drop his links into the folder for you if you feel like looking at those. Those are usually shown in class, but we're gonna skip that for this one. And then I'm also going to drop in, right after this video in this same lecture block, um, a how it's made video about um, an LED source for fixture that I would love for you to, to take a look at just because it gives a better understanding of how those fixtures break down and work. So I will drop that in there for you as well. And that is it for this week. Thanks friends, see you soon.